Hello there and welcome to a brand new episode of Al Kuwait. My name is uh, Tariq Al Aryan and we're coming to you live from the Ministry of Information Studios right here in downtown Kuwait. And I hope everyone out there is having a very nice evening wherever you may be watching tonight's episode of the program. As usual, the camera crew have been very busy filming all around the state of Kuwait. We have a lot of uh, great reports to get you caught up on on tonight's episode of the program, time permitting. And uh, we have uh, two distinguished guests who will be joining us uh, right here live in the studio. Towards our uh, second uh, 25 minutes or half an hour of the program, we'll be joined by uh, Dr. Debbie Wake. And uh, Dr. Debbie is a clinical uh, senior lecturer and consultant physician at the University of Dundee and NHS in Scotland. I'll be talking with her about a uh, graduation ceremony that was recently held at Desmond Diabetes Institute and the collaboration between the University of Dundee and uh, Desmond Diabetes Institute, diabetes, plus a lot more in our second interview segment. But uh, very shortly, we'll be getting to our first guest this evening uh, right here on the program. We'll be uh, joined by uh, Professor uh, uh, Voldemir Kazkurvin, who is the head of the rehabilitation specialist in the Ministry of Health in the Ukraine and medical director of the International Clinics of Rehabilitation. And I'll be talking with him about his center and the great treatment that he's doing in his visit to the state of Kuwait, and that'll be coming up very shortly. But right now, we'd like to get to our first report this evening right here on Hela Kuwait, and we want to go take a look at the rehabilitation uh, clinic uh, uh, that the professor has. Let's take a look at this clinic and then be back with our guests. Stay tuned. Each person has the right for quality and fulfilling life. Professor Volodymyr Kozavkin is convinced in this. The success formula of the Ukrainian doctor made not only him happy, but also tens of thousands of parents and their children all around the world. More than 30 years ago, he started implementing his method of rehabilitation of patients with cerebral palsy. I think that no one has any doubt that today the only way is to maximize the use of intellectual potential of Ukraine, and we declare ourselves modestly but with dignity. I am very happy that this philosophy in our position is perceived by leading medical centers of the world. The basis of the rehabilitation system of Dr. Kazavkin is a polymodal approach using diverse methods to influence the patients, which are mutually complemented and potentiated. As a result of a multi-component influence of the system, a new functional state is formed in the patient's body. Clinically, it is accomplished by normalization of the muscle tonus, increasing the range of passive and active movements in the joints, improving the traffic of the tissues, and activation of cognitive processes. The important part of Dr. Kazakin's methodology is the costume for the movement's correction, a spiral which provokes the usage of external force that corrects the movement of the extremities and the position of the body. I'm coming this clinic, to this clinic because I find this very, very, very good treatment for my son. My son, Muhammad, his name is Muhammad, is old, nine years now. Uh, he's find uh, very, very care in this clinic and uh, very good uh, and modern uh, treatment for in, in this clinic. For this reason, I'm coming to this clinic and I hope continue come uh, to this clinic again. The mother of a patient from Cyprus is also very happy about the results of the treatment and can't hide her joy. This is their 11th visit to the clinic and the effect of the treatment is obvious. He's in general, he's much more flexible. Uh, the upper parts, the lower parts, he's much more attentive as well. Uh, a big change, so that's the reason why we come here. The statistic analysis of medical data of more than 12,000 patients who have undergone the rehabilitation method of Dr. Kazavkin confirmed the high efficiency of the system. 
Normalization of the muscle tone occurred in 94% of patients. Skills of the control of the head and supine position in 75% of patients. 62% of patients that weren't able to sit still have measured the skill. The skills of self-pace recorded in 19% of patients that weren't able to walk. And 87% of patients after rehabilitation course could open the spastic hand compressed in a fist. We have had some great experience and excellent specialists. Besides their effective work, they also organize international conferences to improve their knowledge and to share it with cooperative countries like ours. They accept new knowledge from Western countries and we all deeply encourage their work. The important element of this rehabilitation is the usage of specialized computer games with virtual reality elements. While performing an exercise and a movement in a specific joint, the patient is playing a computer game at the same time. The main story and the exciting animation of the game have been developed by the specialists of the clinic and are made to stimulate the patient to perform correctly in the game. Also to stimulate the increase of speed, frequency and the amplitude of movements, train the reaction rate, improve coordination and ensure an effective realization of the training session. The results are remarkable. Before she couldn't even raise her head, and now she can, and she even walks beside the walls without support. She used to crawl, and now she walks beside the walls in our apartment. She speaks great, the results are excellent, and we are very happy that we found a clinic like this. We will continue coming here until we reach the best results. More than 70,000 patients from 63 countries, among whom were 17,000 patients from Germany, Austria, Switzerland, France, have completed the rehabilitation course according to the system. In 1993, the system of rehabilitation was officially recognized in Ukraine and thanks to its efficiency gained worldwide international reputation. Dr. Kazavkin's methods were included to the four most effective conservative methods of rehabilitation of patients with cerebral palsy. Medical rehabilitation technology has no analogs in the world. Vladimir Kozavkin helps people who are chained to beds and wheelchairs to start walking. The four-year-old Natalia first started to walk here. She lives in an orphanage and now is going through a rehabilitation course under the state program of Ministry of Health of Ukraine. The little girl doesn't stop for a moment because there is no greater joy for her or for the doctor psychologist that accompanies her as these small and such long-awaited first steps. The child was born with different disabilities. She was in an orphanage since she was two months old. She didn't walk. Around a month ago she first stood. She began to stand without support. She's undergoing this treatment under a state program and she was given a ticket here for free. Natalia began to walk. We were very surprised and she was very happy about that. Continuing our theme about the treatment process, we should emphasize that the rehabilitation is carried out in the International Rehabilitation Clinic that is located in Truskovets, in the Rehabilitation Center Elite in Lviv, in the International Medical Rehabilitation Clinic in Cyprus, and also we are planning to open the treatment center on Arbatspit. Institute for Medical Rehabilitation regularly organizes cycles of thematic lectures for doctors' professional development entitled New Technologies in Medical Rehabilitation. Curator of the cycle is Doctor of Medical Sciences Vladimir Kazavkin. There is another component of success in addition to the medical know-how, specialized equipment, qualified specialists at the clinic of Dr. Kazavkin. It's the clinic. All this, stained glass, beautiful bridge furniture, computer hardware, elegant restaurant, create the feeling of a large, comfortable home where everything recalls the joy of life. This is a permanent installation for recovery because it is psychologically important for young patients and ultimately for those who are close to them. We're back uh, right here uh, live in the studio. If you're just tuning in, you're watching KTV2, the family channel, and you're watching uh, Hella Kuwait. Uh, we're coming to you live from the Ministry of Information Studios in downtown Kuwait. And uh, we have with us uh, right now, right here in the studio, we have with us uh, Professor uh, Valdemir uh, Kozavkin, who is the head of the rehabilitation at the Ministry of Health in the Ukraine. 
and uh, the medical director of the International Clinic of Rehabilitation in the Ukraine. And he is joined this evening by, uh, accompanied by Mr. Taras Bosak, who is the second secretary at the Ukraine Embassy, as well as the interpreter this evening for the professor. Uh, we'd like to welcome you, gentlemen, to Hala Kuwait. Hello. Thank you for joining us. And, uh, Professor, can we start out uh, by giving our audience a little bit uh, about, uh, tell us a little bit about your work and a little bit about your center, please? Дуже коротко ми розробили принципово нову методу, яким чином можна допомогти хворим дітям з церебральним параличом. We have invented a completely new method of helping people, helping children who suffer from cerebral paralysis. Діти, діти мають надзвичайно великі компенсаторні, пластичні можливості, великі резерви організму і в зв'язку з цим ми їх активізуємо. So the children have a very big compensa compensatory and uh, possibilities and that's why we are working on activizing these possibilities and abilities in children. З таким розрахунком, щоб максимально повернути цих дітей до реального життя. And we want uh, these children to come back to the real life, mm -hmm. to the normal real life. Декілька сот хворих діток з Кувейта були доставлені в Україну з позитивним ефектом пройшли реабілітацію. Just about uh, 200 of children have been treated in Ukraine. So uh, 200 Kuwaiti so children. Kuwaiti. Kuwaiti children, yes. Kuwaiti children have been treated in Ukraine and they have got a very good results. Okay, so tell us now, uh, Professor, what's the purpose of your visit now to the state of Kuwait? Можете розказати, яка ціль вашого візиту зараз до Кувейт? Главное, follow up with some of the patients and so on. Продовжити лікування абсолютно. Ми зараз зараз ми бачимо, що Кувейт дуже відкрита країна для кооперації, для нових методів надання допомоги, і ми якраз маємо співпрацю з Міністерством охорони здоров'я з нам і обговорюємо можливе співпрацю. We see that Kuwait is a very open country for cooperation in different spheres so that's why we are now having talks with the Ministry of Health of Kuwait in order to resume our work together. Там вони займають дуже конструктивну позицію для можливості сотрудничества. The Ministry of Health of Kuwait has got a very constructive position for the cooperation. І я надіюсь, що тут є хороша перспектива для кооперації. And we hope that in Kuwait we have a very good perspectives for cooperation in the sphere of health. Yeah, Ukraine and Kuwait have a very uh, strong uh, good relationship Absolutely. and friendship and Absolutely. Hopefully that can uh, be further enhanced uh, in the medical field and collaboration between Ukraine and Kuwait. Kuwait and Ukraine have very good relationships in the sphere of health and health. And God, these relationships will be improved in the future. I am firmly convinced that everything depends on the management of the government of Kuwait. But from our side, I must say clearly that there will be a maximum Cooperation and understanding. A lot of things uh, depend on the government, but from our side, uh, we can assure you that we, you will find all possible cooperation and a good understanding of cooperation in the sphere of health. And could you ask the professor now, uh, is the uh, center is it located, what part of uh, Ukraine, where is it at? Можете сказати, ваш центр знаходиться в якій частині України? Це західна частина України, це на кордоні з Польщею, Львов, Лемберг. So this is the western part of Ukraine. This is very close to the borders with Poland. It's just a city of Lviv, Lvov. And I saw it, as we saw in the video earlier, a very big compound very nice, uh, very well landscaped. It seemed like a lot of beautiful facilities. Tell us, our audience, a little bit more about the facilities and services that mm -hmm. you offer at the center. 
На відео ми бачили ваш центр, там дуже великі площі. Можете розказати, які можливості ви надаєте клієнтам, пацієнтам? У нас на сьогоднішній день якраз в фокусі знаходиться медична допомога, в першу чергу, і безумовно достатньо високий рівень інфраструктури. Наші арабські пацієнти, пацієнти з арабських країн, це і з Кувейта, і з Катара, і з Абудабі, вони завжди отримують максимально умови для того, щоб вони себе відчували як вдома. So we provide the best possible infrastructure for our patients. So we've got a lot of patients from uh, Kuwait. We had had before a lot of patients from Kuwait and Qatar and UAE. And we are doing our best in order to uh, just to feel them like at home. So there's, uh, let's say there, as you're an interpreter here, there's also their interpreters uh, speaking Arabic, translators and so forth that help out Absolutely. with the language barrier? У нас є переводчики, і ми теж швай-швай починаємо. Швай-швай. Швай-швай. Слово-слово. Так, вони мають інтерпретів, транслаторів там, і він каже, що навіть ми починаємо говорити арабик, казати швай-швай, це означає трохи. Так. Так, це добре. Тобто, навчання трохи арабик з пацієнтами, які відвідують. Професор, як ми починаємо до кінця цього інтерв'ю, ви маєте якісь... Uh, last words or comments that you would like to say about the uh, collaboration between uh, Ukraine and Kuwait in terms of the collaboration between the Ministry of Health for the respective countries? Наприкінці, у вас є якесь слово, що ви хочете сказати з приводу можливого співробітництва із Міністерством охорони здоров'я? Я твердо переконаний, що в Кувейті дуже сьогодні відкриті, об'єктивні, Люди, які серйозно настроєні на реальну співпрацю. I'm sure that in Kuwait we have very serious and open and objective people who are so really serious for the further uh, good cooperation in this sphere of healthcare. Ми бачимо тут багато є цікаво, що і ми могли б вчитись також, можливо, uh, Кажуть так, якщо в тебе одна ідея, в мене одна, помінялись вже по дві ідеї в кожному. В цьому є велика філософія співпраці, порозуміння і майбутнього. We have a lot of things to learn from Kuwait and we can exchange different ideas, though, so that's why we hope that in the future our collaboration and cooperation will be very active. Inshallah, that's what we hope for. Uh, you, uh, we wish you all the best of luck. Uh, Professor, uh, during the rest of your stay uh, right here in the state of Kuwait, and uh, we hope that uh, the collaboration uh, will uh, be furthered even uh, more closer down the road. Thank you so much. Thank you. Shukran. Я тоже благодарен и надеюсь, что может быть это не последняя встреча, а если оно все пойдет, мы еще будем иметь. We hope that this is not the last meeting with you, and if everything will be good, if the cooperation will uh, be active so we'll inshallah meet here in the studio well we hope it takes off and you're always welcome to come back to the program at any time uh, professor you're uh, back in the state of kuwait thank you very sure much for being our guest it was an honor and pleasure to have you with us uh, professor uh, kaziepkin for joining us uh, you're the head of the rehabilita rehabilitation at the ministry of health in the ukraine and uh, medical director of the international uh, Clinic of Rehabilitation. We appreciate your time with us. Also, Mr. Uh, Taras Bosek, uh, the Second Secretary at the Ukraine Embassy and the interpreter this evening, uh, thank you for your time with us. Thank you very much, thank gentlemen. You. It was a pleasure to have you with us uh, right here on Hela Kuwait. And as I did say earlier, the camera crew have been very busy filming all around the state of Kuwait. Right now, we're going to move on to our next report uh, right here on the program. We're going to go take a look at a graduation ceremony that was held at Desman Diabetes Institute. Let's go take a look at this report and see what took place. Stay tuned.
On the announcement Board of Trustees on behalf of Professor Halal to address the Assembly. I am delighted to see you all here today and would like to extend a warm welcome to His Excellency Matthew Lodge, Her Majesty Ambassador to Kuwait, and to welcome my esteemed colleagues and friends from the UK and from Kuwait. I would like to begin this short address by congratulating the graduates of the University of Dundee postgraduate program in diabetes care, education and management. I've been here about 56 weeks. <coughs> Not that I'm counting, but I remember about 53 weeks ago sitting in this audience seeing the first batch of students graduate, so it's, it's great to be back. Uh, unfortunately, uh, His Excellency the British Ambassador can't be with you today. Uh, we've got a surprise visit of British parliamentarians. Uh, if it weren't for them, uh, rest assured we would certainly be here. Uh, we have no excuse not to um, support Dustman or Dundee University because our office or our embassy is less than uh, 100 yards away. So, um, so thank you. And also to welcome Ms. Wendy Alexander, Vice Principal International at the University of Dundee, who is attending today to represent Professor Sir Pete Downs, Principal of the University. Both Sir Pete and Professor Gary Myers have asked us to pass on their personal message of congratulations to you all. The relationship between the Dasman Diabetes Institute and the University of Dundee, personified today by the Diabetes Care Education and Management Programme, started in 2010 when Professor Hilal al Sayer and Professor Kazim Babahani <coughs> recognised the need for a new approach to tackling the enormous challenge for healthcare delivery caused by the increasing numbers of patients with diabetes in Kuwait, view of the campus in the UK. And as many of the students will know, because we may have mentioned it more than once, they, this title was awarded to us by the Times and Sunday Times Good University Guide, and in the words of the Good University should be. A statement I expect all of those graduates to do. Within the university today, there is a strong emphasis on the profession developing the next generation of We are working together to transform healthcare in Kuwait and today is an important milestone. The sense of momentum you have developed over the last two to three years has been remarkable and reminds me of the words of For me, yes, you work hard to reach this turning point in your career. I feel people with diabetes and in addition to targeting excellency can now motivate and empower to safely and effectively practice their role in self-management. I feel proud that I can communicate better with my health care team, my patients. Each and every module I undertook during my study had a great impact on me as an educator, a healthcare professional, as an individual. I work as an academic support staff at Kuwait University Faculty of Pharmacy. <coughs> During my study, I um, gained an in-depth understanding about educational theories. I learned about new instructional techniques, innovative ways of learning, and um, throughout last year, I have been trying to transfer this knowledge into my workplace to enhance student learning. As a healthcare professional, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. And now, the future. 
is yours. On that note, I will call upon the students who are awarded a postgraduate certificate in diabetes care, <coughs> education, and management. I'm excited today for the Smart Diabetes Institute to celebrate the graduation of the second batch of postgraduate students as part of the postgraduate program being held at the Institute in collaboration with the University of Dundee in Scotland. We're happy to say that 41 members have graduated, including 12 at master's degree level. This has been under the patronage of the Kuwait Foundation for the Advancement of Science, which has supported the Swan Diabetes Institute since its inception and continues to support these very important and brilliant programs. We were also blessed to have today one of our Board of Trustee members, Dr. Faisa Adwari, to present the uh, graduates with their uh, degrees. Dr. Faisal Hamid Rafai, Director of Clinical Services at the Swan Diabetes Institute. We're back uh, right here in the studio, and our guests that we have right now, we have with us uh, Dr. Debbie Wake, and Dr. Debbie is a clinical senior lecturer and consultant physician at the University of Dundee and NHS in Scotland. Uh, Dr. Debbie, we'd like to welcome you to our program, Thank Hela you. Kuwait. Thank you. Nice to have you with us uh, right here in the studio, and uh, you're in Kuwait as part of the uh, team uh, from the University of Dundee in Scotland. Uh, yes presenting, I believe, here at Teaching Week at Desman yep. Diabetes Institute. So can you tell us a little bit about the uh, Teaching Week and uh, mm. what's taking place, please? Yeah, sure. So we've been coming out for about six years now um, to do this teaching program as a, a wider collaboration between Kuwait and Scotland to try to improve diabetes care in the country. And we've been teaching, as you saw with the graduation, um, healthcare professionals, so that's doctors, nurses, podiatrists, pharmacists, also people involved in healthcare management. And they've been progressing through teaching and uh, some of them have managed to get a, a master's or a diploma or a certificate. But the teaching week itself, we're here for a week and during that week we do um, long days at the Dasman where they come for lectures and we do other interactive activities with them, we do simulation and role play. And it's all just to try to improve their understanding of how to treat people with diabetes better, um, also to improve their communication skills, their teaching skills, and just to get them better prepared for uh, for their work in practice with people with diabetes. So it's been and most of them, them are healthcare professionals already. Yeah, they are. So most of them, about 50% are doctors, uh, either working in primary care or secondary care. But we've got a lot of nurses, dietitians, pharmacists, podiatrists and some who have more peripheral roles in laboratories or people who are helping organize healthcare. So not all healthcare workers, but the majority are, yeah. Uh, Dr. Debbie, tell us a little bit about the classes that you're presenting uh, during this week, please. Okay, so as a diabetologist myself, it's very clinically orientated. So we're teaching people about various aspects of diabetes, helping them understand what is diabetes, why do people get diabetes, mm -hmm. what are the risk factors for diabetes. Um, and uh, then thinking about the complications, eye problems, feet problems, kidney problems, how we can prevent these happening and what are the most effective treatments that we have available to try to both prevent diabetes and to treat diabetes and its complications once it develops. So that's been the big focus of my teaching this week. And how have you found the participants? Have they been Fantastic. eager, <laughs> wanting to learn? Uh, Absolutely. Have they been interactive? Tell oh, us more about absolutely. that. We love coming to Kuwait. As I say, we've uh -huh. been doing it for six years. We come about three times a year to deliver the teaching. And we're always impressed by the students. Um, they are amazing. They are so enthusiastic about uh, diabetes care. They want to improve health care. 
they really want to make a difference, they want to do the best for their patients, so they, they really engage with the teaching. We have lots of fun, as we say, and we don't just have them sitting in lectures listening to us, they're participating, they're doing workshops, they're doing role play, we do, we do games, we have all sorts of ways of teaching that's really interactive, so it's great fun. Well, that's good to hear. I'm glad uh, everyone's having a good time and learning. And uh, uh, yesterday, Sunday, uh, the 31st of January, was the graduation ceremony at Desman Diabetes Institute. Yep. We saw that great report uh, before we came on air. Uh, uh, looked like a uh, full house there. A lot of the uh, graduates, their family members, uh, the staff at DDI, uh, the higher management. Uh, Tell us a little bit about uh, that graduation ceremony. How was the function? Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, we had a great day, as you say, full house. And it's always great to be able to stop and celebrate because when we were really busy on the programme, you know, sometimes we forget to stop and say, gosh, everyone's doing really well. So we had about 60 students graduating, some of them at master's level, some at diploma, some at certificate level. Um, but in total, we've had about 300 students either come through the programme or actively on the programme. So, um, and every time we come, there's another 30, 40 students. So the graduation itself was great, lots of fun, lots of celebration, and the students should be very proud of what they've achieved, and I think they were, and their families were very proud. It's unusual for them to be able to get a postgraduate qualification here in Kuwait whilst they're working. Often they have to go abroad for the chance to get a qualification. So I think the fact that they can do this in Kuwait, get their degree here, attend graduation here, they're very grateful for the opportunity to do that. And we'd like to take this opportunity, of course, to congratulate <laughs> all the graduates and uh, wishing them all the best of luck in their future endeavors and uh, careers. And uh, uh, Dr. Debbie, you know, you've, uh, as you said earlier, been coming out to Kuwait uh, almost, I believe, from the start, about 60, 60 years, years ago yeah, when it started, right. uh, mm -hmm. so uh, building up this strong collaboration. So how have you noticed uh, the things change and so forth uh, the past uh, six years? Yeah. We've seen a lot of changes. Um, uh, I think, the, as everyone is aware, in Kuwait, diabetes is a big problem and the prevalence continues to rise. So Kuwait and worldwide also. And worldwide, yeah. So here I think you have about one in four adults mm -hmm. with diabetes. In Scotland we have one in 20, it's slightly less, but in every country in the world it's increasing. So Why is that? It's a combination of things. It's uh, uh, One of the big drivers is, is obesity mm -hmm. um, and fast food, unhealthy food and more sedentary lifestyle. So people are less active, people are sitting more, they have jobs which mean that they don't move around so much and uh, the diet isn't so good. High fat, high sugar in the diet. So I think we see that all around the world. Um, also people are living longer, that's important too. So as you live longer, your risk of diabetes increases. So it's partly due to an aging population. But the main big issue is lifestyle and that's one of the things that uh, we really need to, to try to impact on. So I think that's been the negative side of the last six years in that we continue to see diabetes prevalence rising. But on the plus side, we've seen huge differences in the way that diabetes has been treated in Kuwait. So better understanding about treatments, better understanding about how to prevent complications of diabetes. We go out to the polyclinics as well and do a lot of teaching with people in the polyclinics. How is that? How have those Fantastic. experiences yeah. been? And it's very different. Going out of the boundaries of DDI. Absolutely. Very different to Dasman Diabetes okay. Institute. But it's great to see how clinical care has been delivered in practice mm -hmm. because we need to understand where our students are working sure. and the tools the that they need, that the environment they're in. So we go and we try to do teaching every time we come out in the polyclinics. But we've noticed a big difference. Every time we go, their knowledge is better, the understanding is better, they have more systematic processes in place for treating diabetes. So the knowledge is undoubtedly increasing. And I think as a, as a consequence of that, um, diabetes care must be improving. We've also, as a part of the programme, we get students to do workplace projects. So they have to do something in their workplace to improve diabetes care. And that's what we use as an assignment, for a test for the, an exam for the, for the programme. Okay. So since we've been coming... How's that been going? It's great. Um, it's great. And it means the students are lear not just learning knowledge, Practicing but they're they actually do. putting it into practice and they're making a change. So we've had over 1,000 workplace projects great. have happened as a result of the last six years of the programme. So we hope that that's making a difference in the actual clinical setting in Kuwait, that actual change is, is happening through these workplace projects. So we're very proud of that and the achievements of the students in doing that as well. And this teaching week, I believe you're about halfway through. Yep, that's uh, right. It's been going well so far. Yep, very well. You've come at a bit of a cold time uh, 
for Kuwait, that is. <laughs> it <laughs> is. Where for you, probably it's uh, not that cold. It's not so from cold. Scotland. It's interesting. We always say Kuwait and Scotland have a lot of similarities. Yes. We have a similar sized population. Okay. The healthcare systems are similar in that there's uh, free at the point of care. Uh -huh. But we always say one thing that's very different is the weather. But this time we can't say that. <laughs> there was one day, I think, uh, this past weekend here in Kuwait where it was almost the same temperature. I think it was, it was colder when we arrived in Kuwait than when I left Scotland. And that's, that's unheard of. That's something of. you probably won't ever see again. <laughs> I know. Very I know. rare. Uh, but very so, rare. Yeah. So nice to have you and the team uh, right here in the state of Kuwait. And uh, uh, you are, of course, a diabetes uh, specialist, also very keen on research and mm. so forth. So also could share a little bit about the research that you're doing and some of the uh, projects that you may be collaborating on with uh, Desman also. Absolutely. So one of my big interests is how we use technology to improve diabetes care. Mm -hmm. And I know in here in Kuwait you're very keen on your technology, your mobile phones, the internet. Um, we're, we're interested in how we can use these sorts of tools to try to prevent diabetes but also to help people with diabetes. Um, so we have a number of uh, uh, projects that involve using apps on phones, using mobile health, using text messaging to try to motivate people, to give knowledge, to give them uh, understand better the lifestyle factors, the diet, the exercise, you know, to understand what they need to do. And also uh, an important thing is about our healthcare records. We're very lucky in Scotland that we have a healthcare record for the whole of Scotland for people with that's diabetes. Great. So that's great for research, but it also means that our patients can access their health records. So mm -hmm. they can go online, they can look up their results, they can find out about their clinical care, they can look at the letters that have been sent between the doctors, and that improves the knowledge of the patients. And we've been, in Kuwait, um, we've also been trying to work to say, can we improve the health records? Can we improve the records for diabetes care so that primary care doctors, secondary care doctors can share information better? And also patients can access that information better so that they understand their condition, they access the resources they need. Because self-management is really important in diabetes. It's about patients understanding their condition, knowing what they need to do. Mm -hmm. um, only so much we can do as healthcare professionals, but if the patients can take that on themselves, that makes a huge difference. And that sometimes takes a little, a little effort. It to get the patient motivated and that uh, to better take care of themselves, right? That's it, and that's one of the biggest challenges in diabetes. Um, yeah, a lot of it, so much of it is about self-management. And, you know, it's very difficult. We all have competing priorities in our lives, and trying to get people to make their health the most important priority um, is, is difficult because we all have pressures from, you know, social activities that we do and pressures sure. from peers. Um, and sometimes that goes against um, the best practices for your for your health. So it's a big it's a big challenge. Uh, so, Dr. Wake, what can uh, the uh, uh, patients, the people who have diabetes, well, how can they better self manage, take care of themselves? Uh, what, what advice do you have for them? Yeah, so I think there's some very simple things um, that people can do. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's about trying to stay active. Um, and for some people, that might be taking up a new sport or going to the gym. But for other people, it might just be not sitting so much in a day, you know, standing up, moving around more, well, keeping active. Instead of active. taking elevators, maybe take the stairs. Absolutely, yeah. You know, if, if you can walk, if you can take the stairs. Little things like that can make a big difference. Mm. And just looking at the diet as well, I know that it's, it's very tempting, all the high sugar, high fat, foods that you know just thinking a little bit more about the diet and saying you know can, can I do without that can I reduce my calories a bit can I choose a better choice so now what do you choice? mean by diet what kind of uh, tips would you also give about that please so oh. people can better take care of their diet yeah so I think simple things again if you're going to do something simple looking at can you reduce the amount of sugar in your diet so there's lots of options um, in terms of drinks that are uh, that are no added sugar, that are that are light drinks, you know, rather than, rather than the full sugar, Coca-Colas and things. Look for options with no added sugar. So avoid Try, those soft drinks. Avoid so. the soft drinks, avoid the high concentrated fruit juices, a lot mm -hmm. of sugar in that. Um, so, you know, the obvious things, the cakes, the biscuits, the sweets, try to substitute at least some of those for more healthy options with less sugar. And I think, you know, simple, small changes to the diet like that can make a big difference in terms of both preventing diabetes, but also tr helping keep the sugar levels low if you do have diabetes. I think exercise is very essential also, correct? Yeah, uh, activity is really important. If you're more active, you burn through the calories, you keep the sugar level down, and uh, you, you put your, you, it means you're at a much lower risk of developing diabetes. So um, activity is important. So um, I think we would recommend that people should be active, uh, do moderate to, to intense exercise at least five times a week for half an hour. 
that would be a minimum of what people should be doing. So I think people should be thinking, can I incorporate that into my daily work pattern? Can I go for a walk at lunchtime? You know, can I take up a new sport? Can I dedicate a bit of time each day to exercise just so that it, uh, you know, it can really have a benefit for the health? Yeah, yeah I think diet, exercise, uh, getting active is all, are all keys to Absolutely. try to prevent uh, diabetes. And, and if you're, let's say, borderline, uh, there is ways you could just go back, reverse it, correct? Is. is that true? That, that is true. And I that's think not a myth then, that's, huh? not, that's not a myth. Okay. Um, and uh, I think that's a really important message for patients. So if you are in the process of developing or have just it's developed on the diabetes, increase, yeah. on the increase, if you then take on board all the lifestyle advice, you get your body weight down to normal body weight, um, you lose the weight, you really uh, look at the diet and improve things, you can reverse diabetes. So that's a really strong message for patients. And we didn't used to say that, but now, now we can. So don't think that once you've got diabetes or when you're on the verge, you can't do anything about it. There is a real chance if you sort out your diet, your lifestyle, that you can reverse diabetes. So um, yeah, I would encourage people really strongly to do that. Uh, Dr. Uh, Debbie, as we're coming towards the end of this uh, interview segment, do you have any last words or comments for the audience watching Hela Kuwait about the program, diabetes in general, uh, please feel yeah. free. So just, just to say um, that we've got this fantastic collaboration and I hope that's going to continue between Kuwait and Scotland. We've got a lot to share, we've got a lot to learn from each other and hopefully we'll be continuing to progress that over the next, uh, next few years and I would encourage healthcare professionals out there, if you want to take part in our program at the DASMAN, please get in touch. We're always looking for new students who are keen to learn and hopefully that will make an improvement in uh, the diabetes care for patients. Sounds good and we appreciate <laughs> your time with us. We know you have a very busy schedule and you've got to get back to the Institute now for a class. That's and, right. Uh, yeah. We really thank you so much. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we were speaking to uh, Dr. Uh, Debbie Wake. Uh, clinical senior lecturer and a consultant physician at the University of Dundee and NHS in Scotland. We do appreciate her time with us uh, right here on Hela Kuwait. And with that, we pretty much come to the end of tonight's episode. I hope you enjoyed all that we brought to you on tonight's program. Make sure to enjoy the rest of your viewing this evening and all throughout the week right here on KTV2, the family channel. Before I leave you, remember to always take care of yourselves and each other. And let's always remember to respect one another. Have a nice evening and good night for now. <laughs>